In-flight Wi-Fi, look, it's nothing new. Boeing actually launched something called their Connected Aircraft back in the 2001 Paris International Air Show. But Qantas have been rolling out in-flight Wi-Fi across their domestic fleet for over a year now. But how good is it? And how fast is it? And what can and can't you do with it? Before we start on in-flight Wi-Fi, a quick introduction. If you're new to the channel, and I know there's been a lot of new subscribers recently, welcome. Hello, I'm Stefan. If you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed and you love your travel and aviation content, there's new videos released regularly, so be sure to click that subscribe button. Now, maybe I'm a little bit old-fashioned, but I don't mind the idea of literally leaving the world below you, behind you, and being a bit disconnected when you are on a plane, but I do get the benefits of it, especially if you're traveling for business between those main kind of city hubs, to have in-flight Wi-Fi. And that's what we're going to have a look at today, the new service that Qantas are rolling out for free across their 737 and A330 aircraft operating domestically here in Australia. So of course the first thing to note is not all aircraft are Wi-Fi enabled and the way for you to check if your aircraft has got Wi-Fi on board is kind of a bit hard at the moment. There's no real way of knowing when you're booking on the Qantas website whether your aircraft has Wi-Fi or hasn't. And I guess that's because it's not across all the fleet and the fleet movement means they're not sure which aircraft is going to be operating which leg. So when you're booking, when you see these icons down the left hand side, you can see what aircraft type it is, what other facilities it has on board. This kind of blocked Wi-Fi signal, if it's in black, it means that your aircraft could possibly have Wi-Fi. It's not guaranteed, but it may be on board. But if that symbol is grayed out, then it means that aircraft definitely doesn't have Wi-Fi on board. And that's typical for a lot of the A330s that are operating domestically with Qantas. Then when you're at the airport itself, the departure boards now and a lot of Qantas domestic terminals have the Wi-Fi symbol next to the flight itself so you can see before you get on board that you will have Wi-Fi on your aircraft and that's good because if you do want to download some apps on the Wi-Fi connection or your 4G connection at the airport just because normally you have a slightly faster network in the lounges or in the airport or on your 4G connection than the speed of the connection that you're going to have when you jump on board and of course when you jump into your seat there'll be a leaflet in your seat pocket which gives you information about the fact the aircraft is Wi-Fi enabled and the steps you need to take to activate it on your device so let's talk about that to connect to the Wi-Fi service first of all you're to need to go into your internet settings and find the Qantas free Wi-Fi connection. Click on Qantas free Wi-Fi to connect to that Wi-Fi network and once you've done that in your web browser you want to go to Wi-Fi qantas.com and you're going to need to enter your first name last name and seat number in order to get onto the wi-fi network now i'm not exactly sure why that's being done it could be a data capture exercise i don't know if there's any verification between your seat number and your name to confirm you're actually a passenger on the aircraft i'm not sure who else is going to be accessing that network considering you are 36,000 feet in the air but either way you need to put your first name last name and your seat number agree to the privacy policy terms and conditions and then click on the connect button and that will get you connected to the network. So how fast is the connection? I ran a couple of speed tests when I was flying from Sydney to Melbourne a couple of days ago and throughout every single speed test the download and upload speeds pretty much came out the same every single time. So the first thing I realized was that the stability and the consistency of the connection through that flight between Sydney and Melbourne at least was very consistent. Running the speed test I could see that the download speeds always came out around 15 megabits a second and that's enough of course to do things like your standard WhatsApp messaging, Facebook Messenger, emails here and there but it's also pretty good from a streaming point of view and I'll talk about services like Stan and Netflix in a second. The upload speed on the other hand however is very slow. I could only get about 0.2 megabits a second upload throughout any of the tests that I ran whilst I was on board. And that means that whilst you can pull content down and stream content over that nice fast download speed, from an upload point of view, it means pushing files to a server. For example, if you're going to be wanting to upload YouTube videos, I wouldn't recommend that. It's not going to work. But even things like emails with large attachments that you're trying to send, if you can get away with doing those on the ground before jumping on board, I would really recommend doing that because otherwise, large attachments and emails, they're just going to take a long time to send. It's actually worth looking at joining some of the streaming services through the Qantas network if you haven't already because for example Qantas have got an offer with Stan at the moment that if you're not a Stan member 
and you're looking to sign up, you actually get a three month free trial if you do it through the Qantas network, as opposed to the 30 day free trial if you just do it through the standard Stan website. So check the Qantas website and see who they've got a partnership with at any point in time, because like I say, it might be worth waiting and actually signing up through the Qantas network when you're on board, as opposed to when you're on the ground beforehand. Now, once you're connected to the network, before you go off and do your own internet browsing on all the applications you want to visit, there's just one thing that I think you should check out. You might think it's a touch gimmicky, but I actually think this is kind of cool. It's called Qantas Flight View. And what it is, is a real time overview of all the places that you're flying over with pinpoints that you can click on to get more information on specific landmarks or the destinations that are below you at any one time. Now, of course, if you do a leg all the time like Sydney to Melbourne, you probably don't care that there's Wollongong below you. No offense to people watching from Wollongong, but you've done it a million times, you know it's down there. But if you're on a flight and you're traveling somewhere new, it's actually kind of cool just to check in every now and again and see what is below you. Anyway, if you don't care about that and you go straight to your own internet app, what can you do? Well, you can easily do messaging like WhatsApp. You can send messages via Facebook Messenger. Just get in touch with people from the aircraft. Let them know if there's any delays on route, that kind of thing. But in terms of other communication, and I do really agree with this, I'm glad they've done this. Voice and video messaging is not actually allowed through the Qantas Wi-Fi network, which means you're not gonna have people sitting there on FaceTime, on Skype, shouting at a phone when you're either trying to get some work or get some rest or just kind of zone out next to them. Oh, and just on that as well, if you are gonna use things like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, and, and it is said on the Qantas website and in their literature, but I would just like to reiterate, please put your phone on silent. I mean, the worst thing is when you've just got phones ding, ding, ding all the time on the aircraft. I don't know about you, but if you're in a work mode, it's probably fine. But if you are just another passenger on the aircraft, looking just to have a bit of downtime when you're getting to your destination. It's kind of a little bit annoying just to have phones going off all the time. So phones on silent and then knock yourself out with as much messaging as you want. <laughs> oh man, sometimes, gosh, I sound really old sometimes. Make sure your phones are on silent. Don't use your phones in the movie theatre. Get off my lawn. All right, let me know your thoughts on in-flight Wi-Fi below. If you had any good experiences, bad experiences, any information you can share with us to help, let me know in the comments below. Below? If you liked this, then like this. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, do click that subscribe button. We're growing a brilliant community of like-minded aviators, travelers. Otherwise, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.